Good afternoon, everyone. Artificial intelligence now going to predict sunspots up until 2050. Graphic shows we're going low. Grand solar minimum. Wait, that matches up exactly with Valentina Zarkova's work, who was so utterly dismissed in 2015. Yet now, for some reason, this information is acceptable to share. Soft drip feed. And if one erupting volcano from St. Vincent has sent this much ash to Africa and Europe, what do you think 50 volcanoes will do? Oh, there's 50 erupting right now on our planet. With a step down in the sun, you would expect anomalies on Earth, jet streams, rare subtropical storm taking shape in the Atlantic. In the wrong place. Winter arriving early, South Africa. Midwestern Eastern Vineyards in the U.S., Damage by cold. Oh, wait, we saw the same exact thing play out last week in Europe. Loss of $2 billion in the wine regions of France. And how is it that only one model out of 68 is anywhere remotely close to where the temperatures are observationally for the sea surface temperatures? There's obviously a missing piece into this whole puzzle on how our food production is going to be diminished moving forward. Investors could see some of the strongest price action in gold this year, according to Wells Fargo, which sees signs of a developing rally. The driver behind this new spark in prices is diminishing supply growth, and it could take gold to $2,200 an ounce. Gold supplies have flipped from excessive to deficient, and such times in the past have sparked some of gold's strongest price rallies. And many believe we're on the eve of a new commodity bull super cycle, which would only be the seventh since the year 1800. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. And you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA. So go ahead and give the folks at Patriot Gold Group a call to discuss physical gold and silver and the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 until present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And oh, what a difference five years makes. Now suddenly an artificial intelligence program running predicts sunspots all the way out to 2050 and everybody in the media, wow, we got to listen to the AI, it's so correct. It even filled in a little bit of sunspot activity in the negative one, two, three, and four cycles before the official first solar cycle started in the 1700s. And this AI is so intelligent that it can paint a picture of the sun in Van Gogh style. That bright area right around the 4 to 5 o'clock position, that's a sunspot. Now in the article, it shows you these periods of maximums and minimums. Incredible low activity, as you see in the highlighted area around 1750, is at the tailing end of the grand solar minimum known as the modern minimum. Early 1800s is the Dalton minimum. Very low activity. And you know what's predicted for us? Another incredible low, another grand solar minimum. Yet this one has been well talked about in the mainstream media. So it's a soft drip feed in. But on the inverse, in 2015, Valentina Zarkova and her team of researchers came out with the exact same information based on magnetic fields canceling each other in the sun. That was too early for the message to be drip-fed to the public. It is the exact same forecast going out. Baffling that she was demonized for giving us the truth five years early along with John Casey. Careers destroyed both of them. Yet the information is exactly the same. And why is it released now? It's a drip feed. They're going to have to explain away the cooling. And I'm going to catch 22 on this. I am so happy and grateful that the information is finally being released. Yet at the same time, I realize that we've just squandered six years of being able to prepare for shifting the grow zones where we traditionally grow our food to feed everybody on the planet. These areas at 45 degrees north latitude and above, 
the governments around the world are well aware of we are descending into an era of food instability. 45 degrees north latitude is most of the United States northern grow zone, all of Canada, an enormous amount of northern China, and think about northern Europe as well, grains. We should have been on this six years ago, but to come out with the truth to the public, most can't handle that. So the excuse is now the Great Reset. You see how this dovetails so perfectly into control over the food supply. You have to stand outside. Only so many people in the supermarket. You're only allowed this many items in the supermarket. Because the general populace, the truth, they couldn't handle it. But this is the truth. And we're going to get real low solar activity. And as we progress toward Douglas Votes, Micronova from the Sun, we'll have zero sunspots at the end of 26. Now, what does this have to do with food production, inflation, and how our lives are being structured right now? Volcanic aerosols. When the sun's magnetic field decreases, our magnetosphere on the planet here also decreases, allowing the crust to behave a little bit differently. More volcanic eruptions and earthquakes ensue every grand solar minimum. And I'm using Le Souffre here because St. Vincent is catching everybody's eye. What was it? The fourth large eruption above 40,000 feet. Beautiful image here of 13.4 kilometers above. Well, on the ground, ash covered. Obviously, agriculture is lost on this island. But looking out as an example, total sulfur dioxide as well as particulates plume extending all the way from St. Vincent, completely all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. You go, wow, that's really a long way to go. No, let me wide it out further for you here. All the way to the far end of the Mediterranean, even into Turkey, Europe, Africa. That's one volcanic eruption. There's 50 volcanic eruptions going on at this moment on our planet. Forecast to intensify. Maybe that's the reason that things are not warming as fast as they should in spring and cooling faster than they should going into winter. And this would explain a lot in this grand solar minimum. Now, with the weakening magnetic field on the sun, our Earth's magnetosphere is also going to weaken, allowing the jet streams to go in so many diverse places. Rare subtropical storm. These are the kind of events you're looking for. Unusual tropical systems developing in the wrong place. A place where it rarely occurs. And one thing that we've been told again and again, that sea surface temperatures provide the best gauge of how fast supposed extra energy from you driving your car is accumulating in the climate system. We hear this again and again as the gold standard to determine what's happening, how much change, how fast, how responsible you are for the input into this. This is from 60 north to 60 south. This is CIMP6, which is short for the Coupled Model Intercomparison Projects. Now, I linked that in the description box below so you can take a look at the different generations of the models. Supposedly, the state of the art right here. Best to the best, can't get any better, millions of inputs, all kind of algorithms running, determining down to the square centimeter how warm the oceans are. Yet the real-world observations, there's only one model, one, that is following these trends closely. One out of 68. Now, we were told that this is going to be the forecast for us moving forward. Something has definitely turned here. Volcanic eruptions, aerosols in the atmosphere? Perhaps. Is it a mechanism now playing out on Earth? As the sun steps down in its intensity, now verified and out into the mainstream media because of the AI program telling us how many sunspots we're going to have. The human interaction in 2015 with Valentina Zarkova, that was scary then. Now you need to know it because it has to be explained away. This early onset record cold, record snowfall across Australia last week, it's happening everywhere. Every continent is seeing substantial early or late freezes, record snows, record cold. Even down into South Africa, way early start to the winter down there. 
Snow Report, thanks for putting the info out. And Afriski also showing you some areas that are picking up on the snow this early. Absurdly early. Shouldn't arrive for another month and a half in these areas. But here we sit. Also some other anecdotal evidence that seems to be piling up and piling up like a giant snowdrift. Midwest and eastern vineyards, this is in the United States, hit by historic snow and freeze events. The damage is in key growing regions. Mainly Ohio, Missouri, but they had a nasty freeze that killed a lot of the vines themselves. It was that cold in February. And now this post-bud swell, which means the leaves have come out, started to grow in earnest where the bud's coming out of the vine. They were frozen solid. So whatever was emerging to then produce any clusters, gone. And the article here off winebusiness.com is a good read. The hardest hit areas, Missouri and Ohio. The problem is two nights of record-breaking freezing weather this late in the season after leaves have emerged and also blooms in the orchards for different fruits. Could be apple, could be cherry, could be pear. Those flowers were frozen solid. They're going to drop off. No pollination, no fruit production. Now the wheat is coming out and a lot of other crops have just emerged And record-breaking cold last week across the grow zones in the U.S. all the way down into Texas. Extremely rare. So in the grass stage with record-breaking cold below freezing for at least a couple nights there too, you have to wonder what's going to happen with the grasses. They can replant, but there's a seed shortage. So we just keep getting into this feedback loop here. So an image of a frosted shoot during that freeze event. Frozen, solid. That is going to fall off. And unless it regenerates and regrows another leaf. But there will be no grape clusters coming from this, what you're seeing frozen. And this is happening again and again and again across all crops and all continents. And finally, they pinged it and said, hey, AI just picked up on the sunspots. It's going to get cold for a while. And we saw the same thing play out just a week ago in France. Largest wipeout of French wine industry apparently ever. And over in Europe, to put this into perspective here, agricultural ministers phrased it as the greatest agricultural catastrophe of the beginning of the century. This is where we sit. They lost at least a third billions in wine and with rare spring frost, and they're going to get another super freeze in May, first week in May. United States, the same. Both continents are about to be frozen again in the first week of May. The mainstream media is going to need an explanation as to why it's so cold everywhere and why we're losing so many crops across all continents. I mean, you're just looking at the weather-related posts here off Electroverse. Europe's bracing for another May extreme freeze. That light purple is about 35 degrees Fahrenheit below the normal temperatures. And thousands of all-time cold temperature records smashed across the U.S. just a week before May. Winter arriving early all over the Southern Hemisphere. So absurd narratives really can't contain observations on the ground any longer. So the information's out. It's coming clean. What it means for you and I is food prices are going to skyrocket as more people become aware of what's happening. Might be a good idea for some storable foods. My Patriot Supply and Adapt 2030, the two-week or the four-week emergency food supply. My Patriot Supply also has... One month, six month, and one year packages as well. Water filtration. You can jump over there and take a look at what they have. That link's in the description box below the video. It's a great way to support the channel so I can continue to bring you research just like this and keep you and your family's grand solar minimum prepared. I do thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of the video, and I'll see you next time.